What's up? Good morning. We're real fake like it's morning. I mean, it's yeah. really morning. Well, Labor Day was yesterday, so ain't no sense in us. We didn't labor, so let's not let's not labor. <laughs> yeah, the we older just... I get, the, the older I get, I'm, I'm on holidays. I, I I don't I don't like them as much. I almost use I almost use the word appreciate. I don't think it's the right word. Like to me, I just say just be normal, and then, and it's just like oh, it's off a routine. I'd really just stay all routine. all week's gonna be off now. I thought today was Sunday. Yeah, and I, I bowled yesterday, and I thought today was Sunday. I'm setting our uh, I'm setting our timer. When I was right when now. I was younger, I couldn't wait for a holiday. Even in my twenties and thirties, well, long as I worked for a company, I couldn't wait on holiday. Since Absolutely. On my own, since I'm on my matter. own now, it's, it just get that like that week between uh, Christmas and New Year's is the longest damn week of the year. Well, there's nothing to do. Everybody else is there's you can't get meetings. You can't. It's it's just it's a beating that week for me too. I'm with you. Yeah, because I mean I'm used to doing business and doing hustling and all that kind of stuff, and then I just stops so and I'm just yeah. What's going on? What's going on? Uh, all right, let's get right into it. This is our podcast about Roy, and we'll get into other things. Uh, give me some news, bitch. I already sent you my part. <laughs> well, you got now. You're waiting on me, but. And, uh... Is it something that, since you've read, you know where we're going? Like, you, you, you have the idea of Roy. It ain't something you're having to refigure. No, right. Roy, the, the, you know, I wrote, going way, way back, I wrote a script. It was called The Obligation. And it was, like, wounded up until uh, they go to the house where like, Jordan right, is where straight, she uh, at, yeah, yeah. Uh, kills. Is right. and wounded. The script was that, and then wounded went this way. The obligation went a whole nother way, it, and ended up the girl that they tased became partners with the Penny character, and they started teaming up against Roy. So that and that was kills, that yeah. And there was a whole different ending and stuff. Then I changed it and it became wounded, and then also someone I wrote a thought on change, unchain, unchanged, unchanged. A thought yeah. unchained. And I wrote that story because it, it was similar, but it's a whole different thing. I wasn't done with the, the girl character there. With the character, Kara, right, yeah. She's Suki and a thought on chain, and I kind of just got that idea out of my head. So I was a lo- I'm going a long way around the bend to say I've been with Roy for for probably 12 years now, I would guess. By about 12, that character's been with me. So I. All right. I'll. I'll- I want to. I want to back up because I want to ask you a question. Oh, and don't forget, Lucky was kind of like Roy. I put in the whole prostitute plot line like Roy. Yeah, in the series. Yeah. In the series, yeah. In in if we would have been able to, if this would have been funded and not by us, and not having to take so long to do it, if we could have rolled one into another, could Jera, who didn't die rolled right over and we follow her into a thought unchained instead of Suki. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it could have been worked that way. She wouldn't, she, she, obviously she could have died and wounded. Right. And uh, I had to figure something else there, out there, but yeah, it's in theory. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I was thinking she, or, could have been. or, or you flip it and a thought unchained comes before wounded. And that might've worked even better. Oh, that would have worked. Yeah, Cause that could have been, been, that could have been, what got her after the end of that, which which got her on her path, and then yeah. when you find her in the car, you already know her life is screwed up anyway. But what's what's funny is since we did all that stuff, I kind of you you and you 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 do it too. You get like an idea stuck in your head, and you keep playing it and reworking it. So like you had about a, at least a dozen, probably no, probably honestly like a hundred different variations of live or die you have pitched. Over the years. Thanks for it. It would have been a thousand, but you're you can go with a hundred. But yeah, <laughs> we'll go with a hundred. <laughs> it's like I don't know why that is. A uh, you know, writer, artist, whatever gets an idea in their head. Like I couldn't get out of my. The idea for me was always Roy wanted to get away from everything and be independent, but he finds this girl and really does care about her, but she's a prostitute or just something else dangerous, and he keeps screwing it up. By if he would just leave her alone. 
he'd be fine. He'd be fine. Yeah. And I kept Same reworking thing. that idea over and over and over and over again. So for those who didn't, for those who are watching and don't know, I wrote Live or Die. It was a my version of Crazy Days or uh, the Crazies with uh, Tim- Timothy Oliphante kind of <laughs> oh, uh, uh, kind of deal where it was in the water. The crazies, remember? right? The crazies, it was a remake yeah. of them. Um, yeah. Yeah, remake uh, with the span of 28 Days Later with the Rage. But you wrote A Thought Unchained and Wounded. Now, Perfect World, Perfect World yeah. is we watch A Thought Unchained and introduce Suki and Roy's in there somewhere. We sprinkle him in there, kind of bring him. Then it goes into Wounded to where that's fine, Jaredine at the end, but Roy doesn't because uh-huh. he goes off to the small town where the bus wrecks with the prisoners, and instead of Cody, it's uh-huh. Roy, and there he is in Liver Dyth and saves the day. And then once it saves the day, he goes back to his hometown and meets his brother Cowboy. He sees his brother Cowboy, and then he finds out Cowboy's an idiot still, and they're yeah. they're back in the private investigators. It's, God damn, that's a that's a quadruple. It'd be a, that'd be the yeah they have the, the Marvel universe that'd been the Red <laughs> Sea universe. <laughs> Which we talked about doing one time. We never Absolutely. did. We talked about it one time taking Cowboy and Lucky. Cowboy and Lucky is like the the the, the Iron Man of it all, and everything comes off of that. We talked about taking Cowboy and Lucky and then doing uh, the, it off. the Bad Ranger shows. Yeah, the Melora uh, brother brother Sam. Yeah, the brother Sam show and the Melora the Hit Mom show. Soccer Mom was in it, and then yeah. we uh, Soccer Mom. That's right. We had all that. But once again, everything boils down to time and money, and now we got real jobs. So let's get back to because listen, man, I, I keep we keep preaching this. These are not going to be but five minute long episodes, and with everything going on, me and you, me shooting you writing, uh, we created it together. But we've already basically you've had Roy for like you said twelve years, and we know what we want to do with him. Uh, yeah. The next step for me, is I need to take what you wrote. Uh, you need to send me the final drafts that you made. I am. I'm going to do that today. I thought about that. It's send me the PDF. final drafts. I'll just have a PDF. So send me the final drafts. I can rearrange them. Cause I don't know if I like the order you did them, but we also, right. we had new ideas as we went. Yeah. So we just need to rearrange them a little bit. Um, and then just, I just need to flesh them out. You, you just wrote a real. I wrote scenes as usual. Scenes. So I need to make them just into add some meat to them and make them stories. You got. You just made a bone. I need to put yeah. meat on it. And it's because I knew that by us, I'm gonna do it to your messenger. By right. the way, me and you worked, it was easier for me to not have to. And people don't know this, but it's easier for me where I don't have to explain what I'm doing to you because right. you already know. So well, that's I, what makes it good for me. Well, I already know what you, I know how your, your, I don't know how your mind works. Cause uh, I don't want that kind of responsibility, but I do know <laughs> how your creative mind works. So I'm just, <laughs> I let Steph, Steph have that job. <laughs> that's you a job that. too. Yeah. But, uh, uh, I just sent it. I got it. I see it. Um, what was I saying? I know how your creative mind works. And you, you get, it's just the same deal of you go watch, say you go today and you watch Tenet, for instance, which I, I am seeing. But anyway, say you go watch Tenet and you watch that movie. And because you watch that movie, you're, you're going to get some idea. You're going to see one little shot or scene, maybe, maybe three seconds of Tenet. It's going to make you go, well, what if you did this and this and this with what I got here in Waco? And, and then next thing you know, you've made a whole little little deal. Absolutely. So My, I just need to I, see that little deal from it. Then I can make it into a story. That that was my whole deal watching the behind the scenes of Tenet was the only thing I'm captivated is see how they're fighting backwards. That is my yeah my deal of watching Tenet. And a lot of people are going to be, oh, Christopher Nolan's great. And I agree, he is great. But for me, it's it's great in the world of Dude, he's doing something totally different with these fight scenes. 
He's yeah. working backwards instead of forwards. Holy shit, that's badass. While other people right. would be like, oh, the color's so good. You're going to be like the stories. I like the story. I don't like the story, which I'm, I'm not much of a story guy, but right. as we know, uh, I think for us with Roy, it ain't hard. That's what I like about it. No. Well, see, I, I've been working on this now. I've been thinking about this. We might as well talk about it here on the show. I'm working on this novel on the side, and I do it mostly for fun. I mean, just to get it out of my head. And it, it's a it's a female character, but I was, I and, and, and hear me out on this. It's going to sound crazy, it. but here we go. I wrote her where she's hungry all the time because she's got she's she's got a high ass metabolism. She's really fit. She's like half alien, and she's just got this high ass metabolism, always burning stuff. So she's always eating, eating, eating. Well. Paula, my daughter's over the other day, and Charlie's Angels, the, the newest Charlie's Angels on TV, and the Charlie's Angels girls get to their little base, and they're all hungry. And she goes, man, every movie about women, they got to make us all hungry. And I said, oops, what? <laughs> I asked her about it. She said, yeah, it's kind of overdone. They always want, movies always want to make women like always think about his food. And I never thought of that. And so where I'm going with that is, should I, me, this big, hairy ape, write a female character like that or should I just change the character of a man and be done with it? You see what I'm saying? Well, yeah, but is what is her every, every because what other things do I not know that women are tired of seeing that, but I won't know cause I'm a dude. So well, I would I just be writing the I same think. stereotypes that everybody, they're all, they don't that's like. That's a good and question. I, I think you would have to ask, Ask Paula that. I mean, look at somebody that's Stephanie, who's big and thick, but not Rebel yeah. Wilson. And every Rebel, ever every Rebel Wilson's funny. There hadn't been a, a two hundred pound woman uh, who's a fucking badass that's not ripped like a fucking supermodel and is can do the same can do the same things. You know, take Charlize Theron. I mean, she's six foot tall and big around as mine and your forearm. <laughs> yeah. You know, so I would, for me, I, I would have put, if I could have done that and let's just say all I got Stephanie, which is my wife. If people don't know who's five, seven, 200 pounds built like a outside linebacker. Yeah. That fight scene would have been completely different because she could have scooped those guys up, picked them up and shoulder tackled them into the wall. And I was talking about, uh, uh in the hallway fight. But what's that key thing in that movie now? Atomic Blonde. Atomic Blonde, yeah. So Paula might be right and might be onto something. And maybe you don't go to a you go to a man, you go to a well, Paula, what do you mean? Well, they're always making us hungry, we're always in shape, we can't eat that man. Beat that out, by the way. Uh, <laughs> make it a normal woman that's not a supermodel. Got a sneak. <laughs> We're gonna leave the sneeze, but we'll take out the F word. Yeah, which might work, man. What well, just makes and you I wonder? You know, we can thought of that. Now I'm gonna start watching, looking for that. Well, I mean, I mean, yeah, same here. And I, you know, my first thought movie I thought it was Bridesmaids, where they all eat Indian food and they're crapping in the street and everything. <laughs> that was my well, first dude, take that, and now I'm taking, I'm taking Atomic Blonde. I mean, she didn't eat, but everybody makes a drink when you're sitting there. Are they always? needing a shot of vodka to make yeah. them feel good. Why wouldn't yeah. you make a, a pineapple smoothie and be just as good? And, you know, I, I, that's a good guy. The absolute great question. Well, see, 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 and I always think the thing about drinking, you know, classic movie thing is the man comes from home and what does he do? Heads over to the, to the, his own <laughs> gets a martini. that has ice are in the deal. Yeah. And he makes himself a little little scotch and what, and then some <coughs> guy comes over. You want to drink, and they'll go, "Oh, I'll have a bourbon," and they just get him a bourbon. And they're at their house, and like in real world, you go to my house, "Hey, you want a drink?" Hey, can I get a drink? They say, "Yeah, I got water, I got tea, I got maybe some beer, I got Dr Pepper, you want Dr Pepper?" You know, but in movies, it's always water. alcohol, and they always have it. That's a great point. You know, what we're not gonna make Roy do drink what? beer and eat. <laughs> If he's going to drink something, he's going to have a damn water glass or something. Maybe for once we go, he, he ain't an alcoholic. And they all smoke. The ones that are down on their luck, well, we smoke. all drink and smoke. 
and and every every movie where there's some sort of a personal uh, crisis or something bad happened, they go to the bathroom and they wash their face. Every time. Now, is that symbolism? Uh, yeah, but I mean, it's it's overdone. I mean, how many times have you been so distressed you wouldn't wash your face? Only when my face is dirty. I go, my, yeah, either I'm sweaty or, yeah, my face is Just dirty. think, the episode one that I wrote, I have the main bad guy sitting there outside before Lucky's getting, while well, or, 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 or Roy's over there, with a drink, with an ice glass, with, I have that. That is so typical. I put that in the first. Part. I do too because it's easy. Oh. It's like what's that? There's a if you go to YouTube, there's all these clips where it's like uh, uh, you just don't get it, do you? When people use that line, you just don't get it, do you? Like in real in real life, I've never looked at somebody and said you just don't get it, do you? It's it's like it's a movie line that never was never really said. Even between me and you, we've never done that. No, uh, trying to explain to each other. Usually, if you you're going to say something, this move. Yeah, all you ever do is go, "Bitch, that's it." <laughs> you don't say. That is my go-to word. Yeah, bitch, you don't, bitch, you got it right. Easily. But we talk in movie references, so it's easy for us. But you're right. Well, so it's, it's, so, it. it's one of those deals. So going back to the woman thing, I know your timer went off. Going back to the woman thing. <sighs> Should I kind of like actors and actors like they only want to cast a Chinese person to play a Chinese person now? You can't be white and fake being Chinese, right. or else that's not good, or yeah, anything, any other combination, anything else. So, does that mean as a writer, I should or should not write a, a, a female lead? No, I think you should, but put it in context of what, like Paula, ask Paula, Paula being what she 21, she ain't 21 yet, is she 21? Yeah. 21 so she ain't she's not overweight she's not supermodel no. thin she is your normal. normal good normal girl like hannah normal. so I, I see paula as hannah the new series that stephanie watched and the movie that i like i see paula as that yeah. but they did the same thing with hannah so paula has a good point what if you, even if the chick's a badass why do we have to do this this and this and I, I have no answer for that. Yeah. But and, instead uh, you of, know, you, you, you take a female lead, like in Yellowstone, the, the daughter, I mean, she's just nasty. I mean, yeah. she's just cruel and, and heartless and everything else. So it's like, and I think that that is kind of a, they kind of went too far that direction. It was like, she's like unlikable. I mean, I think some people like her because she is nasty. I don't like her at all. Yeah. Stephanie said the same nasty. thing. She's too nasty. It's, yeah. She's got no redeeming. Yeah. Quality. There's no, exactly. So it's like, I don't know how thing. you find a good mix of like, you know, they're, they're, they're a unique woman. It feels like a real woman, but not go too far with something. I don't know. I mean, you know, my, my perfect lead for that book or my perfect lead for atomic blonde was Gina Garano. Yeah. <clears throat> which is an MMA fighter. And I thought she could have been great in that, but. And she's she hot, but she ain't, she, she ain't supermodel thin either, no. but her, her acting qualities, her emoting is not as good as Charlize Theron no. in, in return of you've got an actor versus an athlete, you know, but right. if you watch her in Haywire, you put her, you surround her with some good, Jude Law stuff like that, yeah. and then she's fine. Well, she did Mandalorian, and you know, Mandalorian's what ten years down the road from Haywire or something like that. That's she you know, better. Years, she's oh god, she's way better. Mandalorian. I mean, you wouldn't know that she wasn't a fighter like, actress all along. She's, so that that's the things I look at. Why can't a superhero or a superwoman be that? It's just just the question. same for. Just the same for me and you. I mean, I'm I'm 245, 5'11", 245, and every – unless you're the rock, I mean, they ain't very big leading men like that. They're Tom Cruise and, yeah. you know, they're not – you know, is every badass dude ripped to shreds? We ain't. I'm just a big dude. You're a lineman. You telling me we couldn't be badasses and know how to shoot a gun and – Longer than that run. 
I couldn't run like Tom Cruise. We're not running. me and Tom. We're not. We would be on scooters behind Tom Cruise. <laughs> and that's another bus. thing. I'd be yeah. like, bitch, why are you running? Grab that bicycle, man. Grab that. You're a good motorcycle guy. There's no need to run. <laughs> but that's a good. That's a good point too. No, no, it, it's interesting to bring all this back to, to Roy. It's interest. It, it's it's difficult to write original things because people are so used to certain cliches to tell the story. And it's not always us. It's the audience because I totally you try I something that. new and people don't pick up on it. And they're like, that's weird. Yeah. And if you go to old, Reli- for, for instance, I thought on chain. I mean, even my mom was like, man, I don't know about that one. Cowboy and lucky. Oh, she's great. The, Cowboy, yeah. the last thing she watched it, she said, man, I hated you as the bad guy. So you had a commercial appeal that we tried for you. Absolutely. Traditional and then, the, and then the artist feel that you wanted people, uh, your, eh. even your mom's like, eh, eh. Hey, you made yeah. a movie, eh. So it, 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 it's, that's just the reason why you go ahead and make it just like everything else because that's what people ask for. I mean, really. You know what? For these people here, will you put up, Will you put up our three minute one take at the end of this, our three minute one take of the wounded that we were going to do for the series and just let them see Roy. And the reason is, is I think it's just a super simple deal to know that Roy's not perfect. Oh the, the, yeah. The one we did on that. It's, right? on, it's on YouTube. Yeah. Yeah. I'll pull up YouTube and on the, on the YouTube version. I'll put it on the podcast one. Just go to YouTube and watch it. Yeah. You can go to YouTube and watch it our red sea but that what i liked about that was one maddie's a bad shot he should have shot him at point blank but uh our guy's not our guy's not the uh the van dam the he ain't the no. chuck norris he is the richard gear in brooklyn finest almost i wouldn't say richard gear but uh what was the other one ethan hawk yeah He's kind of Ethan Hawke in Brooklyn's finest. My deal with Roy is that he just he just didn't quit. He just yeah kept fighting, and eventually he figured he could turn the tide. You know, just like when you fought him in the kitchen there. I mean, you should have killed him, but he just he just one found a way. Yeah, yeah, just found a way. Found right. a way. All right. Well, this was a good show today, man. You guys yeah. enjoyed it. Hopefully people find it interesting. As and I would like to know if people would have the comments of the woman thing, because that's something I, I tell you to this. I had never thought about that. I've always thought about the leading man type of deal. I get it. You know, all the mobsters are overweight and drinking all the time. And it's like, really? Were they all like that? Walking around with long coats and scotches and cigars yeah. and drink or, or was there, you know, so I, I don't know. Let's do it. Let's do it, man. All right. Well, I, I, uh, I'll start uh, piecing together Roy, and I'm going to keep thinking about this, this female thing because uh, I think you stay with the female, just get it out of the, the norm and let people find it. Yeah. And what would be freaking awesome is on the novel, we take the picture of a normal girl. <laughs> not yeah. a not a distraught sixteen year old that you see all the movies. Not a badass chick holding a weapon, but a normal woman that they somebody could go, ah, shit, maybe that could be me. Oh, so I'll leave with this. Speaking of normal woman, you go. Have you seen Kevin Costner's new movie trailer? Uh, I have it up right here. No, it's Diane uh, Lane. Yeah, and it looks like she's the one doing all the action, and she's like probably her what early fifties, late four, probably she early fifties. Dude, I bet you she's uh in her sixties. Whatever. There's an example of a of a of a of a hero, a female protagonist that's out of the norm. Because she's the one. It ain't Costner the one with the shotgun and shooting. It's up uh, yeah. Her. Let him go. It's it's in seven fifties. Yeah. Let him go. Did you like the trailer? I'll watch it right now. Yeah, I, I finally caught up all of Yellowstone yesterday. I binge watched the last three I hadn't seen. I did like. And I that. saw the trailer That's doing. You. Huh? I did like that uh, shootout in the trailer. Absolutely right. I sent you the picture, so you know yeah. I liked it. Well, the the ending of uh, if y'all ain't watched, I ain't gonna spoil it. But go I watch, watch it. Go watch. Look up the ending of the cliffhanger ending of Yellowstone. See if you can't watch it. They do some pretty. Okay. Good. They I got they got explosion that looks legit as hell. 
I, 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 I didn't it. I didn't rewind it and go slow or anything. I just took it as it was and it looked legit. All right, I'll go watch it. I'll do yeah. it. Uh, thank you guys, man. We'll do it again next week. Right. Uh, now enjoy our what? How many years ago we shoot that? Three? Yeah, seventeen. That's that's three years ago. Right. Three years ago. Enjoy yeah. our teaser. One take, except for the drone at the end of Wounded. Once some men are knocked down, they stay down. You take away their pride, and they won't fight to get it back. You take away their family and friends, and they will just turn and walk away. It is men like this that we dismiss or condemn. On the other hand, there are some men you can knock down and they will snap right back up. If you strike at their pride, their pride strikes back. And if you take away their family, they will stop at nothing to get them back. It is men like this that we respect. But every once in a while, there's a third type of man. A man that you knock down, he grabs you and drags you down with him. If you take away his family and friends, he doesn't even notice. He had already written them off anyway. The only emotion he makes us feel is fear. A man like this will have no friends and countless enemies. He will fight many and love few. And his body will always be beaten. And his soul will always be wounded. Mm-hmm.